Hello everyone, Fartno here. Welcome to a new episode of Interview Log. Today we have a very special guest with us, Funny Voice Acting. So without any further ado, uh, you can introduce yourself now, Vale. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Vale, also known as Voice Over Requiem. I played Jude Murray in the Mandela Catalog, Volume 333. This is a series of questions asked to me by Fire Nova over on YouTube. Thank you for taking the time to write these up and for reaching out to me. Uh, I really appreciate it, and thank you for listening in, you the listener. So let's get started. Number one, how did your career in the VA sector start? Um, I used to do radio, both in college and a little bit after professionally on AM radio. And for a long time, I didn't really do anything with voice acting. And with the pandemic, um, you know, sat down, consumed a lot of media like everybody else and realized um, I could do a couple JoJo impressions. So me and a couple friends, we originally got the channel off the ground. And now it's just me making the, uh, the content, editing, posting and all that stuff. But uh, it's been really fruitful. And, you know, uh, Mandela was definitely one of the uh, boons that got me started and, and got me remotivated. I've switched over from solely JoJo to, to whatever I feel like posting. And it's been, it's been very liberating and awesome to finally put a voice to some of the things I had sat down and written and joked about and had sketches over the years with my buddies from high school and that sort of thing. And it's really cool to just be a content creator and, and to make what I want. Number two, how would you describe your voice? Um, people have told me that I just have a, a radio tone to my voice. Um, they're very surprised when I talk like this because this is kind of like my normal speaking voice. Um, it dips down into, you know, lower tones. Um, everybody, you know, a lot of people know me for like my Jotaro impression, which sounds more like this. And people are like, why don't you talk like that all the time? It's like, I could if I want to, but I, I tend not to just because, you know, it's not my natural speaking voice. But, um, you know, um, it, I have a, a decent range. I work with a lot of people who have a much better range than I do. And I'm very envious of them because uh, they can do uh, younger and, and higher. And I just can't reach those points. And, and you know, that's why you work with so many people in the industry. You can't be a one person show and uh, you do what you can. And then that's why you're bringing others to do what you can't. So I love working in this industry and I love working with the people that I do. Okay, number three. Which voice acting roles have given you the most professional satisfaction? I love this question. Um, obviously, I love working with the entire Mandela crew, the Crudella. Uh, I'm so thankful to Alex Kister for giving me a voice in a Mandela catalog, and I love Jude Murray. He's my man, ride or die Jude. Um, working with people like Solid JJ, Mothballs VA, uh, Luckily Latte, also known as Carlito Lopez VO, Ty Does Voices, just the full scope of everybody I've worked with on Instagram and YouTube and just doing sketch comedy and just having fun with it and just really going above and beyond what I ever thought just a bunch of little JoJo impressions would ever turn out to be. You know, even from like a experience standpoint, I'm very much a beginner and, and my ultimate goal is to just have fun while doing it and if along the way I get a role, like I'd love to be in a video game, representing the character, doing the voices of that character, um, just just kind of like what I did with Jude right after three 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 dropped, and and Thorn and Ty and 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 Gabriel and I, we all started like shit posting just a little bit. Um, you know, that's the type of thing I'd like to bring to a, a professional character, and I, that's really just a goal that I'd love to achieve. Question number four, what do you think is the most important skill for a voice actor to have? Have fun with it, man. Like, uh, just don't doubt yourself. Just go for it. If there's a voice you think you can do, practice, practice, practice. The thing that I tell people is like consume as much media as possible, which sounds like a crazy thing to say. But one day you could just be watching a random clip on YouTube or a random show and, and you realize, wow, that character kind of sounds like me or I can do a voice that kind of sounds like that character. You know, a very good friend of mine once told me that you can get the joke down right, get the delivery, and get the audience hooked, and the impression will come later. Like, I know some people who could do spot-on impressions. I know people who bring their own voices to a character that is already established. And in some cases, the people who are bringing their own impression to a character that's already well-established, people will overwrite it and make that new fan character their own. In the case of, like, Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z Abridged, one of the greatest series and one of the reasons I even started doing this was because of those guys, and so many people have kind of replaced in their own mind's eye uh, the voices from the abridged over the original series, and to even reach uh, like a sliver of that would be a dream come true. 
which voiceover artist do you admire and why? This is, I'll be here all day if I'm talking about the people who just have been inspirational and entertaining over the years. I mean, forget for Mark Hamill, Billy West, uh, Kyle Hebert, uh, Phil Lamar, Mel Blanc, Fred Tatascore, I mean, Johnny Young Bosch. There's just so many people out there who just have inspired me. Um, as, as I'm talking, I'm just thinking like Yuri Lowenthal, my name buddy, Eric Vale over at Funimation, you know, eh. yeah, these people like formed everybody's childhood and, and just did the impossible task of bringing so many timeless characters to life, like Patrick Seitz, uh, Tara Strong, just all these people who, Robin Atkins Downs, I mean, just people who have just brought so much of themselves into roles and then brought all of these characters to life and helped us fall in love with them. What is your process for editing your own voiceover recordings? Um, it depends on what I'm editing. Um, I normally record with an Audio-Technica 2035. Uh, in the past, I've uh, recorded with a Blue Snowball, which I got in 2015 after buying a copy of Halo 5 Guardians. Um, the Snowball was obviously the better of the two things that I got on that day. <laughs> yeah, Halo 5 had great multiplayer, but we're not here to talk about Halo. I could wax uh, philosophical about Halo all day, but you know, put down in the comments what your favorite Halo game is. I'd, lo I'd love to hear it. But for the most part, I'm using Audacity. I'm doing the little noise tricks here and there, just like everybody else does. Um, I edit a lot on my phone. I do have access to a desktop, but anytime you see a voiceover Requiem post, nine times out of ten, it has been made in CapCut or InShot. Um, when I started, I was using iMovie, and you could really tell that I didn't know what the hell I was doing when it came to editing. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. But I make content for myself first before anybody else. Um, and if it makes me laugh, then I'm usually like, okay, throw it up. It sounds sounds good to me. Um, and I love, love collaborating with people. So if anybody ever has a great idea and they want me to voice or work in their animation and I have the time to do it or, or their animatic or their meme or their, their shit post or like whatever, whatever you have in mind, hit me up. I'm usually available on Instagram. Give me a buzz. You never know. Number seven, how did your passion with analog horror begin? Um, like a lot of people, I think my first analog horror was Local 58 from Chris Straub, um, the creator of Candle Cove. And that that series just scared the living hell out of me. I mean, growing up with VCRs and VHS tapes and just seeing what people are doing in terms of replicating the, the style of it is just so mind-blowing. And of course, you know, you got to talk about the pioneers, uh, Gemini Home Entertainment, the Walton Files, of course, the Mandela Catalog, my, my beloved. I love the Smile Tapes, fantastic series, same with They Lie Above. Um, the Back Rooms, how could I have forgotten the Back Rooms? Just things that everybody knows, people know it's very entry-level analog horror, but just they, they, were, they were among the first, and they knocked it out of the park and, and really kind of spurred this entire thing. And the funny story was, the whole way I found Local 58 was through Half-Life, actually. Um, Half-Life 1 and 2, some of my favorite games of all time. Uh, there was a guy, and I, I'm sorry that I don't remember his name. If anybody's played Half-Life 1, you know that after the Black Mesa event, Earth went to shit. And there was a guy on YouTube who made this massive hour and like 30 minute video of just like day by day from when the Black Mesa incident occurred to like the, the resonance cascade to everything that happened afterward to the moment the Combine took over in the seven hour war. I was about to say seven year war. The seven hour war in Half-Life 2. It took seven hours for the Combine to subjugate humanity. Um, but they were already beating a ship by this point. Again, another game that I'm talking about that I'm not going to talk about in this, but um, why am I bringing this up? Because after watching that video, YouTube suggested to me Local 58. And then from there, I found the rest, and then the rest was history when it came to analog horror. All right, last but not least, number eight. Since Mandela Volume 4 has recently dropped, what's your favorite character... Oh, I'm sorry. What's your favorite Mandela catalog character aside from Jude Murray? Um, the cat. The cat is, bar none, the best character in the Mandela catalog. Um, that being said, aside from Jude Murray, who ride or die Jude Murray the whole way... Um, I really love where Thatcher Davis is going. I, I think his character is impeccable. I think he's a multi-layered, multi-faceted, very intriguing uh, character, and I'd love to see what comes next for his story. And, like, shout out my man, Thorn Baker, who, at the time of this recording, I'm a day away from meeting him in person at a Teenage Disaster show, so I'm very much looking forward to that. But, I mean, between the special effects and just his performances as Thatcher, it's just... 
beyond fantastic person to work with and, and it's a privilege to work with him and Ty and and Spidey and Fruit Masseuse and just everybody in the Mandela catalog, you know, Rachel, uh, Kraza, Kyle, the whole crew is just phenomenal and, and the people I've spoken to and gotten to know are just, it is just a collection of just some of the nicest people that you'll ever meet. They're talented, they're well-spoken, they're just, they're going to make it in their respective industries in every way, shape and form. Uh, and I'm really proud of them. And I'm really proud to be part of this project. And I'm just really thankful to be part of this project. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Crudella. Thank you, Fire Nova, for asking me these questions. I, I really appreciate someone reaching out to me, of all people, the uh, slacker, loner, nerd who cries in this closet, Jude Murray, um, just, to, just to find out a little bit about me. So I appreciate that. And and thank you, the viewer, for not only watching this video and listening to me ramble on about everything. Um, but thank you for supporting the Mandela catalog and thank you for supporting creators like Fire Nova uh, in what they do. Yeah, Vale, pleasure to have you here. Uh, anyway, you guys, you can check out this channel. The link will be in the description. And yeah, that's all for this episode and I'll see you in the next one. So see you at the next Mandela premiere. Bye-bye.